no matter how much time you invest in preparation, most likely the crucial decisions will be made in the time trouble, isn't it? There will be a moment when you have to make a big decision and, and time is, okay, in chess, the clock is ticking, but you're running out of time. And if at this moment you are not playing a game you are comfortable with, the chances of you make a mistake will be much higher. Because at that moment, we decide by instinct. We don't have time to just to, to check you know, things inst instinctively. So if you are a defensive player, you'd better play in a cautious environment. If you are a more aggressive player, you'd better create a very sharp situation that will benefit you. Because instinctively, you'll make a decision and the chances that your instincts are right are much higher in the situation that fits your, uh, uh, your uh, uh, nature as a decision maker. But the next image, which is my absolute favorite one, that tells more about human-machine relations than anything else. Empire Strikes Back, the original one. I'm sure there are many uh, Star Wars fans there. Now, of course, you remember the moment. Han Solo is desperately trying to escape from Imperial Guard. And the only way is just to move his spaceship into the asteroid field. And you remember the C-3PO telling him in a squeaky voice? The chances of surviving in the asteroid field, anybody remember his number? 3,720 to 1. Did the machine know the odds? Absolutely. The answers never tell me the odds. Now, why it's important? Just jokes aside, because they were both right. Machines knew the odds. The chances of surviving in the asteroid field were slim to none. But the human knew that there was no other option. What was the choice? Going back and being caught? From machine's perspective, being caught by Imperial Guard, tortured by Darth Vader to die in 10 hours is preferable than to die in 10 seconds being hit by an asteroid. Humans knew it was not an option. Machine was not in the position to evaluate the, this one, because this one had so much you know, value against this 3,720. So that tells us that while machine know the odds, it's still for us to make the final, to make a final decision. But also when you look at, at young, young chess players and um, under the umbrella of Kasparov Chess Foundation, I have been involved in working with them. And I'm talking about kids of international masters, grandmaster level. Um, it's, it's such a difference in the way they approach the game, the way they look at the pieces. It's, it's, it happened time and again. We are reaching certain position, analyzing the game, and um, they say, bad move. I made a mistake here. I said, fine. Why? Oh, and then it's a long line, so the machine showed, said, I understand. I could see the screen, but why do you think this move is wrong? And they don't understand the question, because the machine said so. Yeah. Because it's on the screen. Yeah. So it's, it's somehow they, they are be, the, the mind's being hijacked mm. by, by the power of the machine. And one of the reasons Magnus Carlsen was so successful and, and, and still a dominant force in, in the world of chess, and I remember since after working with him in 2009, 2010, for more than a year, um, he never looked at the machine as an ultimate source of wisdom. For him, it more, was more like a a calculator to, to verify his own understanding and evaluation of, of the position. This is a big challenge, but I believe it's not only in chess, it's elsewhere. Uh, many people just are staring at the computers, its eyes are just being, you know, being caught by, yeah. by the screen, expecting just to find a solution there. Just, yes. Instead of thinking for themselves. Exactly, so that's, that's why I always bring, you know, as, 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 in, as a piece of wisdom, uh, the classical phrase from Pablo Picasso, that computers are useless because they can only give you answers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but everything begins with a question. So, another topic that crosses the boundaries of biology and philosophy or whether or not the human brain is simply an incredibly fast computer that could, with sufficiently advanced technology, be emulated. And I admit I didn't have a, a ready answer to this question from a young analyst at this you know, uh, uh, debate in, in Bridgewater because I was asked directly, it's, it's quite a fascinating uh, uh, reaction of these young experts that they're always looking for, for ways to sort of quantify any problem. So 
This is brain. Can we emulate it? Now, uh, I responded that a perfect digital brain would still not know when to decide. So it's, this is this, this timing factor. Because you can collect all the data, all the information, but still it's, it's for human to decide at what point we stop collecting this data and we want to sort of uh, change the analytical mode into the uh, decision-making mode. Um, and I think that this gets to the human element and the human role. So how long you take to make a decision and how much time to allocate and the pressure we feel and it's, it's all, all very human issues. This story begins in 1985, when at age 22, I became the world chess champion after beating Anatoly Karpov. Earlier that year, I played uh, what is called simultaneous exhibition against 32 of the world's best chess playing machines in Hamburg, Germany. I won all the games. And uh, then it was not considered much of a surprise that I could beat 32 computers at the same time. To me, that was the golden age. <laughs> Machines were weak, and my hair was strong. <laughs> just 12 years later, I was fighting for my life against just one computer in a match called by the cover of Newsweek, The Brain's Last Stand. No pressure. <laughs> we should not worry about what our machines can do today. Instead, we should worry about this, what they still cannot do today, because we will need the help of the new intelligent machines to turn our grandest dreams into reality. And if we fail, if we fail, it's not because our machines are too intelligent or not intelligent enough. If we fail, it's because we grew complacent and limited our ambitions. Our humanity is not defined by any skill, like swinging a hammer or even playing chess. There is one thing only human can do, that's dream. So, let us dream big. Thank you.